1017 FM, 710 Keel, Robert and Aaron in the morning. I just, you know, I just think Dan is dorkier than I, which I love. I, I, I claim that. I live it. That's fine. <laughs> I'm a nerd. I'm a geek. I'm a dork. We are joined by uh, Caddo Sheriff Steve Prater. Hey, Sheriff. Uh, Sheriff, good morning to good you, morning. sir. You're, you're in charge of Homeland Security. That means you're up to date on all the briefings with regard to the, the flooding concerns and the weather concerns. What's at the top of your list for what you're worried about today? Well, the, the getting Highway 1 open is one thing with the train derailment. Yes. And that's uh, as, as com- and the weather also and the flooding also. So there's, there's uh, besides our regular things that we worry about, there's those things. We look for the weather to get, uh, as I'm sure you had up to date reports on it, but it'll get bad this afternoon and then leave and then get bad again. We don't know how much water it's going to dump on us. We've already got some flooding conditions, and we're watching Caddo Lake real close. We're watching 12 Mile Bayou. And the river's up too close to 30, if not 30 by now. And so we have the backwater flooding there. 12 Mile Bayou is getting is already full and can't get into Red River, so Caddo Lake is full. And so we've got that. Uh, we're just monitoring, and, and the good thing about our water is that it is slow rising uh and and gives us some time to react worries about cross lake and wallace lake cross lake is fine wallace lake we're looking for some problems there it's going to uh uh it's it's going it's going to be it's going to get pretty bad down at wallace lake so we're prepared like we always are to uh and and as are the residents they know they know what to expect, and we've got some high water vehicles and things lined up to help them with what, what needs to be done there. Let me ask you a, a silly question. I've ne- I can't believe all, all these years I've never asked you this. When when we have situations like this, you know, things are going to be, you know, developing and, and could get dangerous. How does a sheriff in a, in a parish, what, is, what do you do technically with your deputies do you send them all an email do their supervisors do send say everybody's on standby everybody must be in you know able to be communicated with to, to be called in how does that work well the good thing about uh the sheriff the, our sheriff's office and i'm sure it's that way with a lot of places the part of their duty is to keep up with things and so when they know that weather, bad weather's coming in they know to get all of their rain gear up to date and, some of them even carry chainsaws in their vehicles, and they carry uh, different things they not need, their gloves, their fresh batteries for their coffees, their vehicles are fueled up and ready to go, and all emergency equipment. In other words, they're, they're the kind of individuals, our first responders, they're the kind of individuals that don't need any prodding. Our job as supervisors is just to, just to double-check, make sure, is there anything we can provide for you? You know you're on call. Uh, don't leave your, you know, have your phone and your talkie charged up and be just ready to go at a moment's notice. What are your responsibilities with regard to flooding? Your guys aren't going to go out and sandbag around people's individual houses, correct? No, but we, uh, like we've already had our, they've already been up early this morning at the uh, correction facility, and I've had my transportation deputies and my security deputies, and of course they've got the prisoners ready, and they're out doing sandbags as far as filling them up. If it's an emergency is declared, then we can uh, we can take some prisoners and work around private residences, but but uh, that's only if an emergency is declared. We can't work on private residences uh, prior to that. Uh, so that's one thing that that you know that we're doing is it's a lot there's a lot more that goes on than just watching the water come up we've got some high water vehicles that the sheriff's office owns that we have equipped with benches and for room for some cargo that we can go in like at wallace lake transport people uh we go around and make sure that that um because electricity is a huge concern is that that somebody uh, they know to get out and that we help them get out if they if they so choose a place that's flooding because of electrical concerns and varmints and things so sure. there's a lot that we do we have to fool with directing traffic around closed roads i could go on and on mm. about is, all is the road closure problem. problem is that something that you anticipate with the with the saturated soil and the winds that we may be getting well we always have we always have that with the winds that as you suggested that will blow trees over then we'll have to reroute traffic 
And uh, like I say, our hands are pretty full right now. We're just responding and checking the flood, our marine units and all, and then getting ready for this bad weather. And then we've got a lot of units tied up down at the train derailment, for instance. Right. And so we're we're pretty well, I won't say maxed out, because we can always reach down and, and and work harder and get it get some more. But uh, we we've, we've got a lot on our plate right now. Sheriff, the rhinoceros in the room is this. We keep this Red River keeps flooding over and right. over again. More right. more more than once a year. Now it looks like more than four times a year. What is the long term answer and what are you doing to try to reach that? I is I keep prodding and aggravating and talking to the folks that can do something about it. And that is the Corps of Engineers. Um, I stay on them pretty good. And as far as our, um, the Red River Waterway Commission, uh, they've they've helped a lot trying to get some studies done. Uh, Rich Brontroli's group, uh, the the uh, Ali Mustafa and his group at the Levee Board have tried. We're all trying, uh, but we don't have the resources. We don't have the knowledge. To do anything about this is a huge problem and and folks uh, our political leaders the ones in washington have really got to take us seriously as do the state officials it's um is, dre- is dredging the, money, the answer you hear all the money going to baton rouge because of the flooding they have have you heard anything the governor came up here with on a helicopter one time checked on our flooding but um yeah, but Nothing, nothing else. I mean, Didn't bring a check. You no. no, you have no cry. Uh, you have no cry for for doing something about it or, or getting to the bottom of it. Dredging the answer, do you think? Well, I think the dredging you're going to come up with so much material, and it's going to be so expensive, and it's going to be ongoing. And I don't see how we can afford to do that. I, I don't. I don't know what the answer is. There's folks that are hydrologists and, mm-hmm. and folks all over that know a whole lot more and smarter than me. I just know that we got to have an answer because this is going to get worse, and it's going to get worse and worse and worse. And it, it, I mean, we've seen that since I've been talking about it over the last three years.